Welcome to the WW News Today podcast, brought to you by the Carousel of Products. I'm Eric Morton. With me, is, of course, is Tom Corliss, the voice and face of WWNT. What's old is new again. I haven't done one of these. Man, I used to do one of these every week for, uh, boy, it had to be at least 10 years, if not more. I don't know. It's been several years since we've done a podcast. But Eric has talked me back into this. We give the people what they want. They want long-form discussion podcasts. They do. There's a lot to talk about. I was told podcasts were dead. They (laughs) are dead. And what's dead is alive again. So we're we're bringing it back. Uh, The podcast format, thank you for joining us. Uh, Like I said, uh, my name's Eric, and uh, we talk about... Uh, important things, stupid things, things people care about, things people may not care about. But we're going to do it right here on a podcast for you every week now. So thanks for joining us. Uh, let's get to today's topic, Tom. You want to talk about where we are? I think people are going to immediately ask where we are because this is not the studio. Um, this is – so th- for people, this blows people's minds. And we've mentioned it a hundred times. So I don't know how it's news to people. Um, but we have a – our home is WWNT Celebration. We're located – at 1136 Celebration Boulevard. Um, and that is our office, that is our museum, and also Stage 7, which is where you see that's where News Today is filmed, all of those shows, that's where News Tonight is filmed. Um, we're right now, we're in the museum, which is in the front of, of the facility. Um, it's a rather big space, and you get to, if you come to News Tonight, or one of our events, you get to see all this. But yeah, we have a, we have a real physical office and studio and... All, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we have a lot of beautiful exhibits of uh, stuff that Disney Park fans would like. And and uh, sure, if you come uh, to an episode of News Tonight on uh, most Thursday nights, uh, right. we open this up and let people lounge about in here, have a have a soft drink or something, and walk yeah. around and look at all the stuff. Or our events, because we've done, we did Epcot 40, we did the Walt Disney World 50th, we're doing... Um, we did Studios next year. Stage 89 is in May. We did 15th anniversary. We did 16th anniversary. Of us, yeah. 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 So there us. Are other, there's some other opportunities. But yeah, you should definitely come see it. Come see something live. But uh, that's where we are. So this is new for us. Jake ran wires to the museum, and we're filming in the museum. The museum. But Can we put it in quotes? Is it a museum? Is it, it a is a museum. Space? How is it not? I don't know. I don't know at what point uh, something graduates from being like exhibit space to a museum i think once you buy an actual prop from walt disney world to mr toad i think you're a museum well if that (laughs) if that is the baseline we've we're good we're good i think we're good let us know in the comments what what makes it a museum all right tom important topic we want to cover this week because uh there is a certain group of people who are always uh, maligned in society and those people are disney adults so we're going to talk about Disney adults a little bit, um, what's wrong with them, uh, what's right about them, uh, maybe defend them, maybe maybe jump on the bandwagon and rally against them a little bit. I don't really know how this is going to work out. But first, we've got to talk about the news. Let's do the news recap, shall we? Sure. What is hot this week in the news, Tom? Uh, you went to Magic Kingdom. A bear was <laughs> spotted in the Magic Kingdom and prevented them from opening uh, Frontierland, Adventureland, and Tom Sawyer Island. For some reason, Twitter decided to call me the bear because that became a thing. My girlfriend is asking me, why are people calling you a bear? That's definitely not a thing I, that I don't started know here in the YouTube <laughs> comments. At no, some point. certainly didn't start on our YouTube channel comments. Uh, at any rate, a, a black bear was found in the Magic Kingdom prior to opening and prevented them from opening while... Florida fish and wildlife people yeah. took care of this situation. Yeah. And the resulting meme storm and reaction yeah. from everyone has been nothing short of hilarious. It's one of those stories where everyone had a good time, right? It was No one was hurt. It was kind of weird and wacky, and everyone had a lot of fun at the expense of the story, right? It's one of those. I think the, some background is the area north of the Magic Kingdom and kind of around there has yeah. been getting more and more developed over the last several years. Yeah. Um, and through that, the bears have lost whatever habitat they have. People go, there are bears in Florida? Yeah. Um, actually, I didn't think there were this far. I knew they had them in northern Orlando, like Longwood, more wooded area, a lot of that. I know that they've had problems with bears up in Longwood. I did not think when I put my dog out in my backyard 
Um, yeah. That I had bears nearby, but I didn't have bobcats, yeah. alligators, bears, yeah. snakes. We got it all here in Florida. And, and there's some on your side, but I think really the left side of property is where um, a majority of developments happened the last, like, in the 10 years I've lived here. And I think that's probably where a lot of the, that north, that northwest end of property, which is where Magic Kingdom is, kind of. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Uh, the bear ended up in there. Um, like we said, it was, uh, uh, I guess, tranquilized by uh, by wildlife officials. And there is video already. The bear has been safely relocated yeah. to the Ocala National Forest. Now, that sounds humane. I don't know how I would feel if I um, left my home in Windermere or Winter Garden and woke up living in Oca as a new resident of Ocala, <laughs> separated from presumably a family. I don't know how these things work. But at any rate, the bear is safe, nobody got hurt, and hilarious memes ensued. And now there's going to be a Disney animated film about the bear's journey back home from Ocala. Do we get? Do we even get confirmation of where exactly the bear was? I had heard um, Tom Sawyer Island, which is interesting. People said in had a cave there. And Tom Sawyer. Uh, I, I heard in a tree near Big Thunder Mountain. Yeah. Can you imagine in the cave? Can you imagine if nobody spotted this bear? If they opened the park. And kids go roaming around the caves in Tom Sawyer Island, and there's a freaking bear in there. I just imagine, like, the bear would be kind of chill, and just, like, the kids would pet the bear thinking it's an animatronic or a costume <laughs> character, and the bear's just chill. Like, no one gets hurt. The bear's just like, hello. <laughs> it, it, the funny thing is that they only closed that half of the park, like, as if they knew where the bear would go. Yeah. So, like, what if they opened the park, which they did, to all the other lands, and the bear's like, I'm going to go to Fantasyland now. And now the park is full of people. That would have been chaos and pretty fun, and we probably would have well, gotten a lot of page views that day. They could have sedated the bear by putting it on Peter Pan's flight and hitting the e-stop, and the bear's head <laughs> just hits the sail, and they're like, all right, now we take him, take the bear out. It goes into it's a small world, and then they're like, "Oh, we have to we have to clean this place now. A bear's uh, been in there." And you get your uh, wish. They would clean. It's a small that's world for you. Never gonna happen. Never gonna that happen. That last scene just gonna. The sky's just gonna continue to turn black, like it's the <laughs> apocalypse. There were a ton of hilarious like memes yeah, and things. Memes open, oh God, so I'm gonna scroll through a few of them. We'll see if they can put them on the screen uh, for you. There he is. He's carrying a uh, a Mickey Mouse popcorn bucket. The, uh, Halloween, the Halloween one. one. Yeah, it's the Halloween one. Yeah. Uh, that's great. You know, um, this <laughs> guy raised his hand who had a bear for September. There's a lot of news at Dizzy. That's, um, do you know what that's from? That's cabin in the woods. Oh, cabin in the woods. Yeah. So he's there. like, everyone's taking bets on what's going to happen. Um, oh boy. I'm going to need my glasses for thing, some of these. Right? Uh, he's got a castle selfie. Uh, there he is uh, walking around fantasy land. Is he meaning princesses? Yeah. He's a princess fairy tale okay. hall. Um, I, this one bugs me. I don't even know if we want to go for it. Because we had written this, we had already already written this and created a graphic for news tonight this week of Churro Bear yeah. with the uh, movie poster of Cocaine Bear, and then yeah. uh, that came out um, after we did that. Um, here's one that our social media team made, the I old like Spider-Man yeah. pointing at one another. That was Michelle on our social media team that made that, and that made the rounds. Uh, and then a lot of people just putting pictures of the Bear riding attractions. Uh, there is uh, Buzz, Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin. Um, How did that? the bear get a boarding group? A oh, bear <laughs> encounter, like alien encounter. Yeah, bear encounter. I love the bear, bear on Tron light cycle run. The bear is like crouched over in the front on the he got mountain a boarding on the light cycle. So That's boarding. basically what my father looked like on the ride. I think if you're a real bear, you don't need a boarding group. They just let you on. It's a loophole that a lot of people don't know about. In there, there he is riding Dumbo with his hands up, his That's paws. Great. Her, I guess her. They said it was a female bear. Yeah. I, I apologize. Pirates, um, pirates, of course. Pirates. But you know who would stop the bear from riding pirates? The bats. Batbeard, the pirate, would not the take Batbeard. kindly to this. We had uh, the bats. Don't want anybody riding pirates. Uh, the bear is pulling the sword. The sword out I like of the, the guy. Stone. My favorite is the guy in the background looking at his phone. That's my favorite <laughs> part of it. He's like, ah, eh, whatever. And oh, the bear has joined the bear band. <laughs> he's playing guitar left-handed. He's the sixth she, bear rug. I'm sorry. She. She's the sixth bear rug. <laughs> oh, she, she met Mickey. Minnie and Mickey, of course. Uh, these just go on and on for days. But, I mean, this is one of the most hilarious stories. Um, 
you know, it did. It wasn't. It didn't set the internet on fire, but it set the meme memeverse on fire. Maybe yeah. some of the best memes that we've seen in a long time yeah. with the bears. People ask a lot of dumb questions too. How did that bear get in the park? Well, how do you think the bear got in the park? He made a park just... pass reservation <laughs> after buying a ticket. <laughs> See, you're stupid. You can't figure out how to work this system. The bear did fine. <laughs> He's got Pixie, or she's got Pixie. The, says, the bear understood yeah. that not only did it need to buy a ticket, it needed a reservation. But, I mean, the, the park is not surrounded by guard yeah. towers and guys with machine guns, right? There's it's actually a, kind of scary how bad the security at the park is. There, I don't know if I'm really talking about that. But. Well, I don't want to really get too much into it, but it, it's wildlife. Of course, wildlife comes yeah. and goes within the park as, yeah. it, as it pleases, and I don't think people counted on a bear. I don't think yeah. I don't think a lot of people knew that Florida had bears. I mean, how did the ga- people are always like, how did the gator uh, get into Magic Kingdom, right? And it's like, well, it, it, they can climb fences, and it went over the fence, and then it went in the water. And I'm talking specifically about the ones they find in in. The rivers of America, not the, right. not the Grand Floridian one, which I think had there was less resistance even there for. A gator well, gator. obviously that's the, that resort is built on a gator's natural habitat. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna find it. It's on. Yeah, they've, you, they've always been in that water. Of course, they can. You know, and the I think the Bay Lake side is even wilder. So could have came in through there and swam around and got to Seven Seas Lagoon, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, all sorts of wildlife comes in and out of property. They're looking for humans. Who are trespassing, not, you know, they're not yeah. so much looking for wildlife. I don't think Disney security is equipped to deal with a bear on the No. Horse. And what's funny is um, they've always talked about, uh, oh, there's been, you've heard, oh, the restrooms at Animal Kingdom all have doors on them, right? In case an animal gets loose. That's the old. They're always closed. That's right? the, the old the tale, open, right? Yeah. yeah. That at Animal Kingdom, you have doors on the bathrooms yeah. in case there's an animal gets, well, they don't have that at Magic Kingdom. But can you imagine if the bear ended up in the animal kingdom? What if you're on this safari and you see a bear mauling a zebra or a bear gets over to Pride Rock? Can you even begin to imagine? See, I think almost all that is more because uh, they have natural barriers that are built to contain animals. So I don't think that could happen. I think their natural barriers are designed to contain the type of animal that's in it. So it may not be able yeah. to get it to Pride Rock. No, because but it might be able to get to the, the savannah. The lion can certainly jump further than the bear yeah. can. Yeah. But it may be able to get in the savannah. Maybe, but I don't Bears are climbers too. I don't know. I think Kilimanjaro is built to the point where no animals can get in or out. Like that's the whole idea. You know, the park maybe get in the front entrance sure, but a uh, Rainforest Cafe for a for a pastelaya, perhaps, but <laughs> but I don't I don't know how far the bears get in an animal kingdom. I don't know. Keep in mind they can also swim. Yeah, you know, good swimmers. So so Typhoon Lagoon. <laughs> how do, how's their surfing? It's it's good. <laughs> Picture the bear. It's surfing. good bear surfing. I think I think they're right up there with the best of them. They're very at home in the water. All right, what else happened in the news recently? Well, Figment. Figment returned. That's right. Tom's Tom's favorite. Figment returned and promptly fell down multiple times. Just so he could rise again. That is what they do. Now, talk to me a little bit about that. Because I saw YouTube comments that are like, Tom, why are you obsessed with Figment? Nobody cares about this character. And I'm thinking, there was a five-hour line to meet a character. Plenty of people. There was a seven-hour line for a popcorn bucket yeah. based on this character. Yeah, the line at Destination D wrapped around the inside of World Showplace to the point at which there was no time for him to meet everybody. Um, so why, why do people love Figment? Is that what we're asking? I, why, I assume it's because I it mean, connects with you from when you were a child. Yeah, it's an original character that was in, and this is not a nostalgia thing. I think it is, it's agreed upon by most people in Imagineering, by most fans, by people that saw that ride, that it was probably one of, if not the best thing Walt Disney Imagineering has ever done. It's probably the best Disney parks attraction of all time. It's a, it's the culmination of everything they had learned, right? All that, that great original storytelling they learned from Pirates and Mansion, a really innovative ride system that, you know, handled an insane amount of people. Um, and then they took it to the next level, right? There was a scene that followed you, so imagine getting on Haunted Mansion and then a scene follows you. The like ghost the room, actually follows the you. The room comes with you. Like that was mind boggling. No one understood how they did that. And even they, like that was kind of the downfall of the ride. It, it was, you know, it was super complicated. It was a giant turntable and this this guy in an airship 
created a purple dragon in front of you. They sang to you and then magically they floated away as you went the other direction. I mean, it was it was an incredible ride. I it's think unfortunate that's it that he's gone. and It stuck with people, but beyond that, right, like if you're the generation after that, like that Sherman Brothers song is super catchy. I think a lot of people fall in love with Epcot and he is Epcot, right? Like that that's his park. He's there's something cool about it. It's a park with an original character mascot. How many other Disney parks have a original character that is their mascot? World Showcase also they have that trash can everyone's upset is missing. All the day drinkers are up in arms because the trash can from the Rosen, outside the Rosen Crown is missing. Let's save this part for the Disney adult discussion because I think this falls into that territory. This oh, this the day gar- drinkers. There's this definitely garbage, a different... This garbage can falls in there, yeah. The garbage can, yeah. that That is... People are concerned about it. His but name, you think they're... He has a name. It's Benny, apparently. There are 12 Disney parks, and how many of them have an original mascot? The answer is one, and that's Epcot, right? Magic Kingdom... I get, you could try to say Orange Bird, but he was the mascot for Citrus and was gone for... Right, he's a, a promotional a Yeah, he's Yeah, not, he's not a Magic Kingdom mascot. Studios certainly doesn't have one, and if they do, it's not an original character. Neither does Animal Kingdom. Um, Disneyland, you can say Studios DCA, is Mickey. But that's not an original character. Mickey, well, he's not original. Also, it kind of yeah, was Roger something. Rabbit when they opened, but... Um, yeah. You know, it's it's changed if, if it was a character at all at any point, right? And then other other parks that have rides with original characters, the, th- those characters are never the mascot, right? Like Albert the Monkey is not the mascot of Hong Kong Shandu. Or Disneyland. Shandu is not. So there's Disney Sea does have essentially a mascot, and it's Duffy the Disney Bear. Technically, he existed previously. And then was sold to Oriental Land Company as Duffy. So technically they kind of have one, but also, those are the only two. He was left out of all the discussions and memes yesterday about all the bears. Yeah, he was. Everyone had Winnie the Pooh, and they the had Americans Bear hate Bear, him. and they had all these other characters, yeah. but nobody said Duffy. The Americans nobody had Duffy like crawling around the Magic Kingdom. What's funny is though, today they put out that document about why they're gonna spend billions of dollars on the parks, and there is a whole slide in that presentation. That is Duffy and Friends. That is this is this is a franchise that makes tons of money and in our Asian markets is our biggest seller. It's it's more popular than Mickey Mouse in our Asian markets, right? And that's mm-hmm. a, that's the thing with Figment. I think we don't know the facts on Figment. They won't talk about it, but maybe Figment's the best selling character at least at Epcot. I don't think at Disney World, but he might be the best seller in merchandise in that oh, park yeah. at least. Oh, yeah. And that's a big deal when you're up against. Moana and Guardians of the Galaxy and Mickey Mouse and Olaf and that, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah, good job to him. Uh, the 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 Duffy thing is interesting because I know like ten years yeah. ago I developed like a natural resistance to Duffy because I felt like they were trying to cram Duffy down. They my were. Throat. It but wasn't like, natural. But he's popular in Asia, and people are like, "Well, I'm not gonna go see him. I'm not gonna buy him." Yeah. And maybe this second try. Should I tell the Duffy story? Is it a good time for the Duffy story? Tell the Duffy story, Tom. We have so, no time limit. We don't. Um, as if we don't have to be anywhere in like an hour. Um, mm. Anyway. <laughs> so the if, for those that don't know the Duffy story, this is, this is what's nice about this. We don't have the time to tell these things on the other show. The backstory of Duffy is Disney in the early 2000s decided they were going to make a plush bear to sell at the parks and even Disney store. And it was just called the Disney Bear. That was the name of How it. creative. It was the Disney bear, and they tried. There were different variations. It came in colors. It had holiday outfits. They tried. It didn't work. And so what happened was it was such a big initiative that they reportedly had millions of bears left. They just had them. They existed. They were made, but they couldn't sell them. So at the same time, the Oriental Land Company, who owns and operates uh, Tokyo Disney Resort and obviously Disney Sea was looking for, because that park was very similar in its original intention to Epcot. Not not in the educational aspect, but in the aspect of this is a park that will not have the traditional Disney characters. That was their original thought. Is It's kind of, it's a Disney park for adults, and so it will be its own thing. And so they went to WDI and went, we would like a mascot. What Can you come up with something? And someone at WDI was like, oh, we have all those bears. What are we going to do with those bears? And so the, the, as the story goes, there was a boardroom full of Oriental Land Company executives and WDI. And before the Oriental Land Company executives got in the room, they put one Duffy, or at this point just Disney bear, in each at each 
that at each seat. And the Japanese... These Did he have old, the sailor hat? These, no, it's just the plain Duffy just the at this point. One. He's not a sailor yet. Um, no backstory yet. And so the the these are older gentlemen, you know, rigid Japanese male businessmen. And they come in and they sit at the table. And these businessmen cannot put down these bears. They're picking them up and playing with them. And they're in love with them. And immediately, they left the meeting. They're like, we will, we will take the bear. We will take the bear. And so as it goes, as the story goes, WDI had a backstory. They came up with, oh, it's a bear that Minnie made for Mickey. So when he goes away sailing, because it's against Disney Sea, when Mickey goes sailing from port to port, um, he has Duffy to keep him company. And then Duffy was a huge hit. They were like, well, we need more. And they did Shelly Mae, which was Mickey making a bear for Minnie when he's gone. But then it gets insane where they, they go to, um, you know, Porto Paradiso, they go to Mediterranean Harbor and they meet a cat who paints with his tail. And then they go to New York in the early 1900s and there is a ballerina rabbit. And there is this bear that bakes, or a dog that bakes cookies. So we got bears on the on the. There's brain. a turtle involved. There's a turtle, point. that's later. That's after Disney like buys the rights back. So Disney sold the bear rights to OLC. And the funny thing is at this point when Disney learns how successful it is, in order to get the rights back to the thing they created for and sold to OLC, they now have to pay licensing fees to the Oriental Land Company <laughs> to license back the thing they created. Because organically, you know, very innocently, <laughs> it became a smash in in Japan because everyone just thought this is cute and I love it and I want to carry this. These adults who live a life where they are, you know, it's a very rigid life, right? There's very little self-expression. And Disney is a place where these people can let loose and be themselves and maybe, you know, do things that are not acceptable in, in normal Japanese society. And everyone just was so enamored with the idea of carrying a plush bear around. Like, it just made people feel good and happy. And it was a giant success. And Disney immediately was like, now it's our turn. And the Americans were just like, this, 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 I don't want this. So, <laughs> so people carry around full-size plush. is very common there, is it? Oh, not even just full size. They sell the big ones, you know, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. the big gelatoni I have in the front. The people, there's people that carry those. They rent strollers for them. Um, they buy outfits. They make outfits for them. They make outfits that match their outfits. They photograph them all around the park. Um, these are beloved characters. There's a very emotional connection between the guests and these characters. And it's very, it seems as, I'll tell you this, before you go, I think it seems weird. And I think you do sit there and you're kind of like, oh, this is capitalism. They just care about selling more plush and blah, blah, blah. And then you watch people with it in the park and it's kind of this sweet, and this, this plays into the Disney adult thing too. Um, you know, there's a lot of adults with oh, plush man. animals. If we go international with this topic, this could be a It long makes show. them happy and you can see how happy they are. I mean, in general, what I love about the Japanese parks is the guests seem legitimately overjoyed to be there and part of it is like i'm gonna carry my bear around and take cute pictures and be myself and have i don't care what anyone thinks i'm gonna be me and i'm gonna have a good time and i i appreciate that but that's the that's the story of duffy and how that all came to be and then disney trying to capitalize on you know what happened so Japan. i want to go back to what you said so mickey the story is mickey is traveling from port to port he's a sailor but without Minnie. correct so this she is, being a woman and this being Japan, this is, she cannot come sailing with Mickey. It's a different time. It's the early two thousands. It's you know, it's no one, you know, was was. Like, I just oh, picture like Nikki Mickey her. being like a Navy guy traveling port to port, yeah. and she sends Duffy to make sure that he's not like cheating on her. I feel reminds like, me of uh, in Ghostbusters when they're they're fighting the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, who is a sailor. And they're like, well, he's in New York. We just go get him, you know, and, uh, you know, we're all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's I've been to Fleet Week. I was a Marine, though, so different different time and place. But spent did a lot you, of time at sea. Did you serve with the Stay Puff Marshmallow? No, no I, nor did I serve with Mickey. I had 18 months of sea time as a Marine, but I never. nobody ever sent me with a, with a little plush bear. Mm -hmm. But I probably needed supervision back in those days. Um, I'm sure, like, that's it, it has its roots in... Something, right? I mean, there's certainly stories from World War One and Two and other things where people from different countries went off to war and they, you know, take some sentimental thing with them or, or their significant other or family would give them something to remind them of home, right? 
that it may have not been necessarily so, a plush so, bear, but so let me ask: in the story, Mickey is a living creature who's traveling port to port, yeah, and Duffy is not a living creature. Duffy is just a plush bear that is Mickey's pal. Duffy's both. He, but then in his own story, Duffy yeah. is a living creature. Oh, this goes deep. He's both. Duffy is both a plush bear made for Mickey. He's and like also Chucky. Alive. Yeah, just not murderous. <laughs> He's like the Disney Chucky. Wow. I love it. That's Duffy. Okay, maybe more on that later when we this start. This is a about whole bear themed episode. But I guess with Eric here, every episode <sighs> will be bear themed. If it's not that, is someone claiming that I demanded to have lemon, lemon and water. water? Is there any lemon in There's your water? There's no lemon in water. You don't even water. have a themed cup. Uh, look at oh figment! Look at your guy. Yeah, of course. Is. This is my forty-four dollar corksicle that I didn't know was forty-four dollars that I bought, and then realized I paid forty-five dollars for a cup. What did you think corksicle was? Well, I knew it was a cup, but I didn't know it was forty-five dollars. You didn't know they were expensive? No. Like, I don't live in the real world. My only exposure to things is in a Disney. Theme. Like corksicle and Yeti are like. Kind of the same, but like the same Tervis. I thought it was going to be like price priced range. like Tervis. I didn't think it was anything. Well, Tervis is mostly like plastic. These things, that's yeah. probably is that steel Tervis or aluminum. Tervis is still or thirty. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you're gonna pay a little more for that. What are you gonna do? Forty five dollars. Forty five. It's like women with their their emotional support stand like cups, right? It, that's a thing now. And those I are mean, expensive. There are plenty more p purchases you can make at Disney World for forty five dollars that are dumber than an insulated. I don't tumbler. know. I could get a filet mignon probably. Yeah, yeah, you can you can do. That's true. It seems somehow better you than can't drink out. Although of that. I mean, Figment is on this cup and he's very cute. I love him. I don't know. Your shirt probably cost a lot more than that. It, it, it's you know, is it more technologically advanced? Yeah. No, it's just no. fabric and buttons. But it does have empanadas on it. Well, there you go, empanadas. Yeah, so, also crumbs from something I ate this morning. <laughs> Take all the time you need to clean yourself up. Just in the middle of the podcast, just brush myself. There was a bit of popcorners residue. Yeah, I'm going to do it too. You never know. On my shirt. I had popcorners for breakfast. There you go. We're off to a great start. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what popcorners are. You I was thinking Pop, Pop Warner. Is? I was like, oh, yeah, the yeah, All-Star <laughs> Resort's full of kids and cheerleaders. Pop Corner <laughs> Weekend. It's Pop Corner <laughs> Weekend. No, Pop Corners are popcorn chips. You've never had them? They're delicious. Like a, they're like a shaped like a tortilla I chip. Promise I promise this had them, episode but... is not sponsored by Pop Corners, by the way. I promise. No, they get everywhere. Like sand. It's coarse. Yeah, it they're is. Coarse it's all over everywhere. my shirt. I didn't notice because it's white cheddar and it's a white shirt. I didn't even realize it was there until I felt I felt. You had the white crumb. cheddar popcorners for breakfast? I mean, we're going, if you want me to spoil what's happening, we're going to a review lunch at Le Cellier, so I didn't want to have like a meal. I just wanted something to tide me over till our 3 o'clock, uh, 3.30 Le Cellier reservation. All right, makes sense. No. Um, last news story I think we should talk about before we get to the meat and bones of the show. Um, Disney Expansion. They announced today they've got over a thousand acres of land poised yeah. for expansion. They're going to spend something to the tune of sixty billion dollars over the next decade on expanding parks and resorts and Disney Cruise Line. And some of that, I mean, for those watching out on the West Coast, we know the Disneyland Forward project has been um, put out there quite a bit. For here, we don't really have a ton of information about what so, they might do. They just kind of yeah. Dump out some concept art every now and then, just like, hey, this guy, I saw this guy sketching on his desk. Yeah. Here's something. The disclaimer you have to go with with Disneyland Forward, though, is that it's really just so they get zoning. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do what they showed you, and it doesn't necessarily mean the next 10 years all of it's going to be done, right? That's the thing with Disneyland Forward. Now, there are more concrete things for Disneyland we know. We know they're building a, a Avatar land. We know that. It's yeah. been said that it will be similar in scope to the one at Animal Kingdom. So we assume it's a land and it's big and it's going to be at least a billion dollars, if not, you know, with inflation. You know, they, they spend over a billion on the one here. I imagine it's going to be We one don't know where they're building now, it, right? Uh, supposedly at Disneyland, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. Well. But either way, they're building it in the resort. So that's that's $2 billion of 60 spoken for, right? How many billions of dollars we can attribute to the cruise line yeah. um, between the, I assume it includes the treasure, the adventure, and ship uh, three in the wish class, which is still unnamed. And also so the work on Lighthouse Point, right? Or yeah. There's a question a lot of people had. 
people were saying with great conviction to me that the adventure is the Chinese ship that they bought. It is. That's not a wish class ship. Why would no. it be the third class of the? Oh, I see. You're, you're saying wish I'm treasure saying and, and third. Okay, there the you third go. Class. Which it all gets confusing because now the adventure is is boat seven, so right. it has skipped seven. Yeah, seven. It skipped a boat, right? So boat seven is supposed to be the one after treasure, but now the because they bought the adventure, that is now ship seven, and it's. It's super confusing because it's now a different ship of a different class introduced in the middle of the rollout of the Wish class, what began as Triton class. Now, do we believe that the Chinese ship that they purchased is going to operate primarily out of Asia? Yeah, it's just, yeah. Do we think they they might have Duffy theming on board? Do you think maybe they certainly a could. Duffy ship? Certainly could. Captain Duffy? Yeah. Maybe Gelatoni could paint the yeah, stern I mean, I'm sure of the ship? Yeah, translate to Singapore. Yeah, why not? I'm 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 maybe he, I'm voting right now maybe for him Gelatoni. as a sailor is the is the atrium yeah. statue right? I want Gelatoni on the stern painting oh, I'd love the that. name if it's with his all, tail like the Duffy characters are the main characters of the ship that'd be adorable. They would never do that. But they might. It's Asia. You it's, never know. If you go to like Shanghai and Hong, so like in Tokyo Disney Sea, like they they don't because again all sea has like standards. Um, the, the Duffy characters do not cross into Disneyland. That is not their home. They don't go there. They are Disney Sea, and they that's their story, and that's where they stay. Then you go to Hong Kong and Shanghai, and the, the rules do not apply. Like Duffy merchandise is in every store in the resort, and it's Duffy's it's, waving from the castle. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It doesn't matter at those two parks. They're they're everywhere and in everything. Um, and so that's and those are the ones where Disney controls them, right? So, you know, I don't think Disney has the restraint that OLC has, in that it's it's like yeah, they could be the mascots of the ship, sure. So sixty billion dollars, though. That's a lot of money. Surely that's an, at least another resort, right? Another hotel. Several. Maybe right. reflections. Uh, definitely the They're, new Shanghai one. The new Shanghai one. Yeah. Um, surely reflections, right? They're something. They're keeping happen. that permit open. They have yeah, that yeah. land. That DVC yeah. is, you know, just you spend all this money to do the cabbage. You spend all this money to redo Trails End and to redo nearby facilities. It's it's something's going to happen. It may not be what it was supposed to be before, but it's going to be something. That land is empty and it's prime and it's, you know, they went for the easy money first, right? They were like Grand Floridian. Polynesian. Well, what they did first is Grand Floridian. They just mm -hmm. bought a building. They yeah. just were like, you guys are going to remodel it, right? We don't, do you want us to change room? No, we'll take regular rooms, but we're going to make this a vacation club building. <laughs> we'll just buy it from you. I've never stayed at one of those. So I don't, at, at one of the DVC uh, Grand Floridian rooms. Oh, the real ones are, are beautiful. They're gorgeous. I love that building. But this is just a regular building at the Grand they bought with the new remodeled rooms that are going out to the entire hotel. But that's, it's DVC. Hey, got to make that money. And then Polly, they're building the tower. And then the the question is, what's next? And it's it's got to be that, right? I don't, yeah. unless they're going to move forward with another Bay Lake Tower, um, I think Reflections is next. They could knock down one of those garden wings at Contemporary and put the, another the Bay Lake. one remaining, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the one that's remaining, yeah. and uh, put something there. Yeah. Obviously, Disneyland Hotel is opening their uh, yeah, I don't even know that villas soon. So soon. It's all it's it's already that budget's yeah. already spent, right? That's yeah. that thing is ready, almost ready for action. Yeah, um, I think we're definitely looking at Park Three in California. I think we're looking at a lot of money. They've they said what they say seventeen billion in Florida. Yeah. So, well, they they have said that in the past. So that's got to. Then be, they said we're pumping our brakes on that because yeah. of business climate, and then people thought that was them taking shots at uh, the the government in Florida. Some were saying no, it's just that they're losing money. I don't think they yep. said they were pumping the brakes. I mm -hmm. think they just said like it's it's over a certain amount of time. Um, so that's seventeen of sixty, right? Yeah. Um, which is Florida. So and and Hong and the other thing you have to remember, Hong Kong and Shanghai are, are in this too, right? Um, so it's it's a lot for sure, um, but it's spread out a bit. So I, you're not getting a fifth park in Florida. Don't don't even think about it. Don't no, but do we it. think the third part? The, so the Disneyland Forward included concept art where they kind of crossed over the road yeah. and kind of I don't know on the other side of the yeah, I don't think so. hotels and stuff. There was all that. Yeah. But do we think it's the fifth park? It's going to be like that corner of Catella and Harbor. Like I, uh, I think what it's is the that? Toy Story uh, lot. Toy Story lot. Toy Story lot was always envisioned for for Park Three. And I think this is this is to get the zoning that would allow them to do whatever they want, wherever they want, right? And they so, want a skyliner going down Catella. They probably do. They yeah. were a people mover, or they they said that in the document. Yeah. Um, 
Look, there is a lot of growth, but I think there is more growth potential in Anaheim than there is here right now. Uh, and I'm, that's not politics. That's not anything of that. I just think we have reached, we have reached a critical mass with, with people's vacation time mm -hmm. and how long a, a Florida vacation or Orlando vacation can be. Yeah. There's only so much time. And I think, you know, when you built four parks so quickly and then didn't maintain them, there is a lot of things you have to redo. There is a lot of cleanup, right? Because now, now it's clear, like we have to, we're going to expand Magic Kingdom. That park is very busy and very crowded and it needs more to do. Yep. We need to fix Dino Land because guests don't understand it and it's kind of half baked right now and something has to happen, right? Yep. Um, and so that's what it is. It's, it's going around and we have to try to fix and maintain the four existing parks. And that's where our focus is going to be in that and probably new resorts. Um, but, but in California, I think the sky's the limit. They only have three hotels and they only have two parks. And there's clearly a market for more. There's real estate issues there, obviously. No, they've, but they've solved it, though. They have. They can do some yeah. things. They can't do a lot of things. They can, they can do build more a resorts. theme park and probably a resort or two. No, more than um, that, I think. But keep in mind, they still are going to have to replace that parking capacity somehow, yeah. which means building a giant parking garage, which They'll are very garage. expensive. They, there's yeah. plenty of room there uh, by the Pixar Pier Hotel, whatever. Yeah. Pixar Play what Pixar Place Hotel. Yeah, Pixar Place Hotel. Build another Sorry, garage. I just stayed there and I don't They'll remember. They'll build what it's another called. garage. Um, uh, but Paradise I think Pier. I think they're going to get like a they're redoing Downtown Disney right now, which is great because I never liked that Downtown Disney. Um, and I don't think there ever was much of value for people other than your I know you love your bar. U Uva Bar was that your U thing? Rest in peace Uva Rest Bar. You will be missed. Uva bar. Um, you were a nice place to go when yeah. my back was tired and my feet were sore. <laughs> And my stomach wanted alcohol. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think there will be another district that connects to Park 3. And I think there is, there's there's more interesting stuff that can happen, right? They're, supposedly, they own Garden Walk. Like, that's a thing they can yeah. do something with Again, some sort point. of disconnected from property. A yeah. little awkward. You know, it's it awkward. won't be, yeah, it won't be traditional in the layout of, like, Disneyland Paris or Hong Kong or... Here it's not going to be like that because they are boxed in. But if They've no, if they get a green, if they get a green light to run a Skyliner down Catella, yeah. yeah, or something like that, then yeah, that, that they comes can't into play, run but... a Skyliner though because that guy that that has those toys he throws up in the air. <laughs> oh, he shoots on the, the glow in the dark. Yeah, things. he's gonna yeah. get caught in the lines. They can't. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. They can't do it. Uh, that walk down Harbor is just. Uh... Yeah, it's rough. Can we just please put a moving sidewalk in there? Just yeah. please. They know a lot of those people stay down at the, you know, hotels south of the park. Yeah. Right. But I don't we'll know. see what happens. But I think there's there's a lot of promise there, and I think we know what they're going to do. Right. We're not going to get original storytelling. We're they've told us what they're going to do. You're going to see a lot of Zootopia, and you're going to see a lot of Moana, and you're going to see a lot of Wakanda, and you're going to see you know you there there are those cornerstone franchise Toy Story cornerstone franchises that we're going to continue to see a lot of. You're going to see themed lands based on films and that's that's what they're going to make yeah. and that's what you're going to get josh tomorrow did specifically mention wakanda yeah uh black panther wakanda uh land yeah doesn't mean anything right it's just something no. he said that no but they're going to build zootopia again and if it's not in florida it's going to be in the u.s and that leaves one place yeah world of frozen yeah, for sure. Why not? There, if you go to Disneyland, There's there is way frozen. less Frozen yeah. stuff than there is at Disney yeah. World, right? No, I think for sure. Like that's like Fantasy Springs is some of the stuff they've shown, but we know for a fact that OLC is not going to let them replicate a lot of the Fantasy Springs stuff. Um, they're really just using it as a placeholder show what we could do. But World of Frozen, right? That Wandering Oak and Coaster and Frozen Ever After are two things that you know, um, you know, a, a second boat ride with a drop is not a thing at disneyland so that's something you could do and they don't as far as kids coasters what they have they have uh gadget or it's not even gadget it's chip and dale's gadget chip and coaster. dale's gadget coaster um, starring inspector gadget it makes sense it, it makes plenty of sense the sky is the limit i think for disneyland i think there's a lot of opportunity there um and the market will bear it unlike florida which we're seeing a bit of a decline but they they're convinced that's not permanent. They're convinced that seventeen billion could be spent and people will show up again. And we'll we'll see if that's true. I don't know that the seventeen billion is still the number, right? I I do recall them kind of saying we're we're backing off that right now. Well, some of but, that included the Epcot expansion and stuff. Yeah. So there's only so much left. There's still you know more than half, but 
Yeah. It was pretty sad. They had a graph and you look at what they spent like 2020, 2020, it's like below the line. Oh yeah. And now obviously they're, they're saying, Oh, that we spent a lot now cause they had delayed a lot of that construction construction budget. So yeah. I like that it started 20 years ago with mission space. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like you, you didn't pay for mission space. Um, that was that was HP slash Compaq that paid for mission space. They might have had to pay to knock down Horizons. Maybe demolition well, either, costs. Either of way, Horizons. what's funny about that is they're trying to show a correlation between what they spend and what they make, and they're right. like, "If we spend more, we'll make more." And I'm looking at and then the look stock at, dropped two percent immediately. Yeah, <laughs> you look at that previous, you know, the older era with Everest and Mission Space and Tower Terror in California and all that. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it, I'm like. Like, guys, you listed kind of all your projects for more recent years, but I can, you know, I know for fact that you've omitted a hell of a lot of stuff from this last decade. Yeah. You, there was plenty of stuff you did in this time, right? The same year of Mission Space as Mickey's Filler Magic. The same year, you know, you, you don't have you know, all that money you spent in 2005. You built Soren in Florida. You built Lights, Motors, Action. You built, you know, in California, you built Buzz Light. You're like, there were other periods of a lot of spending there that you just kind of were like, that's eh, not important to the story. Just look at, we built all these theme lands and look at our profits. And it's like, like yeah, it's working for sure, but... Let's, that doesn't mean you have to be disingenuous about what you, what the people were doing before you ten years ago. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. Uh, it's PR speak. Yeah. Right? So, all right. Well, that is the news. Tom, who brings us the news? The news is brought to you by Carousel of Products, which you can find at carouselofproducts.com. It is the official shop of WDWNT.com. I am wearing. I'm wearing one of the shirts today. I'm wearing the... Easy if, you, now. if you think this is good, you should have seen Horizons, which... Is that on sale? I don't even know. If we have a few left, I know. Sure. No, we got plenty left. They're available. Not in that color. I don't know if they're... they're is black. this the old that's color? That's the blue yeah. one. That sold Because we do try... When things sell out, we try to not remake them. Um, but a lot of stuff is on sale. They're having an autumn sale, 50 to 75% off. We have inventory what that must deal. go. We have shirts for $5.50. <laughs> We can't That's be making money on this. We got three and four dollar pins. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of five dollar shirts actually. A lot of four dollar pins. Um, yeah, hold almost everything in the store is on sale. So go to carouselofproducts.com. It's a great way to support what we're doing here. Another great way to support what we're doing here is the WDWNT Inner Globe Society. That is correct. Tom. Through Patreon, you could join at patreon.com/wdwnt. We are currently working on a way where this will be released early. To our Patreon members, that'll we're talking about that. We're going to figure out the logistics of that, but we do have a lot of a large holiday collection coming, right? We're going to have a lot of fun stuff for the holidays. Or for wigs? Yeah, well, for everybody. But you mean for Carousel? Pro- I jumped to a different. Well, I was just saying. You said early access. I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe some of that merchandise will be available to the wigs. There will ahead be. Of time. There is limit when we do limited, very limited run stuff. Right. We do make it available to the wigs first, and I will tell you, there is some very fun stuff coming from Carousel Products, some stuff we've never done before, some product types we've never done before that are probably very ambitious for us. We'll see how it goes, but we're very excited about the next, I mean, we're looking all the way out till next May and Stage 89 already, but um, a lot of cool stuff is coming. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Now I think we're going to get to today's main topic, which is Disney adults. Us. Us. Do they get a bad rap? Well, we is are it us? The magic. I think first, I think when we wade into this discussion, we first need to define what constitutes a Disney adult. Is a Disney adult just someone who likes Disney? Is it someone who maybe their identity is primarily associated with their Disney fandom? I don't know anyone like that. Is it, you know, is it people that go 10 times a year or is it someone that only goes once a year but is obsessed with it? They watch all, are they all the there same? There are people? definitely non theme park Disney adults, right? There are people who just like the movies and the TV shows and that. That that's I think that's a thing. I think and there are people that and some of those people do not frequent the parks a lot, I think. Right. But but I think for our purposes being a Disney Parks news entity. We probably want to talk about professional Disney adults. Yeah, we, uh, fair. We probably want to talk about the park people, right? Which are like people that this yeah. is that this is the only place they vacation generally, and um, it's it is their identity, and 
Yeah. There is a spectrum of this, though. I would say, like, even on staff, right, there's, like, a low-grade Disney adult, someone who goes to the parks a lot and enjoys them, and there's someone who's obsessed with everything. I think you would fit on the one end of the spectrum, but you're not, like, a Disney <laughs> bounder. You're not, you know, there's these different compartments. I think I'm a low-key Disney adult. Like, we go a lot. We we live near the parks. We go a lot. I, yeah. I do it for a job. But also, there's not, like, I don't go crazy for any of the merch. I don't. I don't wear a lot of. I mean, I, I'm wearing a Disney baseball jersey. That's about as deep as it gets with me. You yeah, know? Sometimes on the show, you don't even wear Disney clothing. You wear that that Beefy King shirt or yeah. the, or the German I'm a beefy beer King adult. shirt. Yeah, they. Oh, that's that is the Willow Tree. That now it's just called uh, Holler Box. But yeah, another great Orlando. I like also an Orient Express t shirt. Roller coasters. I can name City, all you know? of Eric's t shirts. I've seen them all. No, everyone says that, and then they go, "You always wear that," and I go. This is the fourteenth shirt in my rotation, and I go, "Oh, you wore it every two weeks." I'm like, yeah, it never right. feels that way. Um, but no, that there are these type of things. Right, I used to be like a golfer. I primarily yeah. identified as a golfer. I, I was a Disney person most of my life, but in between, I've been a golfer. I've been these other things, and a Disney person might say I'm not really like a hardcore Disney adult. But my friends that played golf, oh, they'll tell you that they thought yeah. I was a hardcore Disney adult. I took a lot of yeah, because any. Kind of any foray someone makes into the Disney side, they just are like, oh, that, that's weird. Like people even just, going I think, to parks. I don't think it matters where you are on the mm-hmm. spectrum. I think outside people think it's weird no matter what. That's just the, the, what the world has arrived at. This first, I, The first time I really saw this coming into the conscience of the, conscience of the public, where it was like mocked on the internet widely, yeah. um, I think was there was the, that, um, there was like an article where they said there, there was a, a woman saying, oh, there were these childless millennials that were Disney. Remember this? They were like, I tried to buy a Mickey pretzel, and there were these childless millennials and these Disney adults ruining the experience, yeah. taking it all in for themselves and not caring about kids. You know, this is a theme park yeah. for families with kids, and these people are in my way, in line. Why am I standing in line behind people who don't have kids? Yeah. Is that where it started? That where the mocking of the yeah. Disney adults started? I think it started before that, but I think that's when it came into full public consciousness. Yeah, and I mean, another way to refer to them is like paying customers, right? I don't know how me paying to get into a theme park and yeah. you having a kid that you paid to get into a theme park gives you more or yeah. less rights than yeah. me, and I try to share yeah. my you know, space. At, I will tell you, as an annual pass holder, I'm sure that people will say, oh, annual pass holders, you know, they, yeah. they go to the parks, they clog up the line. I do not. I do not clog up those lines because I ride fewer attractions than almost any yeah. annual pass holder in town. Well, here, here's the thing is, people want to point the blame at us. Mm-hmm. That's not who to point the blame at. Number one, the Walt Disney Company, from, from its, I would say, Really, from the when they started to be on television, when Walt Disney was on television and the Mickey Mouse Club was on television, is when people start to develop a very strong emotional connection to the brand. Right, Uncle Walt comes into the my my you know living room every Sunday, and you know I grew up watching Mickey Mouse Club, and to the point at which I remember two thousand one, the commercials for the Hundred Years of Magic were, you were the first Disney generation. Now come bring your kids to right. be a part of this celebration. And and the the tagline of the event was we share a dream come true. And the song goes, it's been a part of me, it's been a part of you. It's it's something that's ingrained in us by being part of that Disney generation. And it's I, I think it's inarguable. The 50s, despite the fact that the company's existed since the 20s, the first Disney generation are the kids of the 50s. That's really Mickey Mouse Club, yeah, Disneyland. Wonderful world of yeah. Disney. That's absolutely where it starts. Like people liked Mickey Mouse and loved those characters before that, but that's when I think Disney people came into being. Um, sort of with the birth of American pop culture as it's as it exists today, right? Yeah. And- um. But but think about it. But Disney sp- Disney then like the other thing is the parks evolved. The parks evolved when they realized that there was money in people that didn't have kids. So, and this didn't start when this lady wrote this article. This begins a long time ago. Eric, this begins before I was born in the 80s, right? When Disneyland decides we're going to have a dance club, right? right? When they do Videopolis. Videopolis. When Walt Disney World goes, what if we had a place where adults can go and drink and party and it's New Year's Eve every night? Pleasure Island. Right. right? What if we have a we start building resorts with spas? Do you think children are going to the spa? Like what? 
when they they saw a market that they did not cater to that was that wanted to come to them. Right. And that started in the late 80s, early 90s. And so these people that the DVC, same thing, yeah, right? Yeah. These people that come with kids, like obviously it's meant for families too, but it's meant for everybody, right? Walt's thing was it's you know, the primary thing, it's a place where the kids and the, the and the adults can have fun together. Right. But but also that that can be mutually exclusive, right? The kids can have fun on their own, and the adults can have fun on their own. It's a place that was built for the enjoyment of everyone, the same way that they made movies, right? For every laugh, there must be a tear. That Walt Disney made these very emotional films that connect with people and were meant to be enjoyed by everyone of every age, not just children. Um, so, I think the Disney parks, like like Raleigh Crump said, the Disney parks are like a salad. There's something for everybody. There's a lot of ingredients in there. And there's something for everyone in there somewhere, whether you're an adult, a child, you have kids, you don't, you're retired, you work, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. There's something for you to enjoy. And so did Disney adults create themselves? No, they were a market that Disney capitalized on and capitalized on so well to the point in that I think in many cases we make up more of the pie than the original intended clientele do in some ways. And, and you have to say that like Disney fandom is, uh, you know, this is pop culture, uh, obsessions are not unique to Disney, right? There are plenty of people that are into all kinds of stuff. And as a, as someone who has at various times of life identified as like a sports fan first, yeah. I mean, they're, they're as mock worthy as a Disney adult, right? You spend a, you go, you're into the, uh, your favorite NFL team, right? I'm a Chiefs fan. I'm from Kansas City area. Um, the, you buy season tickets, very expensive, right? An they manipulate pass, you right? through your emotional connection to your team. It's an they, annual pass to your sports team. Yeah, it's an annual pass. It's very much more expensive than a Disney annual pass um, for an NFL team, right? Um, they You monopolize a lot of your time. You have an emotional connection to your team. This is not like... You wear a jersey and dress like your favorite players the same way a Disney person may cosplay. As right. their favorite character. I don't know right? if they carry around a bear that looks like Patrick Mahomes uh, with them. Maybe they do. But I think, you know, there are a lot for, you can find something and everybody has a hobby they're into, yeah. right? Um, Disney, the the thing is it's more singular. It's more like it's just this giant globe that you can find all of, you know, so you can go on all your vacations to the same place. And I don't need to go to Italy and then go on another vacation to France and go on another vacation wherever I can go to Epcot and do all these things. So you could do more maybe with that obsession, uh, within that obsession set of the world's a little, and you go on Disney. Now you have a cruise line, right? Cruises, so, adventures by Disney. There's yeah. six Disney resorts around the world. Like there's a lot of options. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, th I know that what I've heard you say before is what do you do on your weekend, right? Someone yep. says, oh, you're a Disney adult. You just go to Disney. Is that what you do? And you're like, what, what do people do? They, they go to the mall. They go, they go shopping. shopping. They go to movies. They, they seek out entertainment and diversion yeah. and, and shopping opportunities. It's not all that different from the guy who's obsessed with mowing his lawn or the people, um, you know, people that get into, uh, any of their social, circles, whether your social circle is the junior league or the Kiwanis club or yeah. your church or whatever, it's a these hobby. are, these are things that people do for self-fulfillment, yeah. right? They, I want to, I want to be entertained and, and I want to do this thing. Do they go too far? Well, let's talk about this. A woman paid for Mickey and Minnie to be at her wedding and the money she spent made her unable to provide meals for the guests at the wedding. You can decide I mean, it's you your wedding. You can do what you want, but also maybe you've gone a little too far into your obsession yeah. if you're doing that. You're inviting me to a wedding. I have to take time out of my day to go to your wedding. You know, um, I'm going to get you a gift for your wedding. I'm glad that you yeah. do something that makes you happy. There's <laughs> conventions, right? I mean, it's it's people are very passionate about things they love, which I don't think is bad as long as you're not hurting people. That's great. Uh, the Disney fandom is very large, though, right? So yeah. people. And there's a spectrum of it, right? So there are people that feel like they can come to Disney every year on a vacation and that doesn't necessarily make them a childless millennial or Disney adult or any pejorative that you can come yeah. up with. It's just something that they do. Um, I don't know. Do people go too far? How do you I take think, it too far? I think people go too far in everything, but I just, you love, do what makes you happy, right? And as long as you're being financially responsible and not hurting other people, I don't think there is a too far. I think people should 
be free to live their own lives, to paraphrase Sebastian the Crab. People should be free to live their own lives. Perhaps when your your philosophical quotes are all from Disney cartoon characters, maybe that's the I mean, a lot of them are from artists at Wed and the studio. I mean, that's... The human but world, it's are, a mess. Those are creative geniuses, and I put a lot of stock in what those people have said. Those people have accomplished a lot more than I have in this world. Um, you know, billions of people have fallen in love with what they've done. Um, I think there, there's something in there. There's something that says something about who we are as people. I want to know, uh, and maybe you can leave this in our in our chat uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or um, send it. I don't know if there's comments on the podcast side or not. Yeah. Um, probably depends on where you get the podcast. But I want to know, like, what's the extreme? Where do you draw the line? And and who out there knows the craziest Disney fan, right? Who's the craziest one you know? What it, how what lengths Me? they'll go to? <laughs> I don't know, though, because yours is a professional obsession. Just because I um, monetized it doesn't mean it's not insane, right? I no, mean, but... I mean, look at this room. But right? I think there are people... I, I would say, um, for instance, you go to the parks often. You don't go to the parks that often here. Um, yeah, not as much. There are people that every time they go, they go multiple times a week, and they Disney-bound, and they have an outfit yeah. for it. Maybe that's a higher extreme. They might not know who designed Test Track... And which yeah. Imagineer drew the first concept art for the Haunted Mansion. But these people that go and they are obsessed in that way. You are obsessed much more in the uh, foundational uh, story of Disney parks, uh, the names of yeah. who created these the, things. The quest to the, understand why as a child when I knew none of that, why these things made a connection, right? And, th and that's what it is. It's a quest for knowledge about what makes this so special. Yeah. Uh, some people like me, I'm the type of person that I go to the parks just to, just to be there, just to be yeah. in the mix. Right. I'm, um, you know, if I, it depends on which park I'm at, but yeah, I can sit outside someplace and watch people catch the vibe as they say, yeah. and just, and just feel the uh, excitement and buzz. Uh, you said earlier in Japan, uh, this is an observation I had recently that these people are, they, they're very happy. They're outwardly happy carrying yeah. their plush Duffy around and all this stuff. I think in in America, um, when I go to the parks, I never see anybody happy. I think we're happy in retrospect when we think about the things we experience, but I think we often get so obsessed with doing this, especially if we're yeah. if you're from out of town, and you're coming on vacation, you have your checklist, you got to hit these things, and you're there's uh, a, a mother or father who's like a drill instructor getting the kids like, okay, yeah. get in line, we got to do this. Okay, now yeah. we're behind schedule, we got to do that. Yeah. I don't see a lot of people smiling and being happy when they're at Disney World. I think it's happy in your memories, and it's happy. Uh, you you might be happy experiencing it, but outwardly you're kind of like yeah. stressed out. So, like so to me, lady, the lady you brought up that mm -hmm. was mad that people were ruining her family's vacation. Mm -hmm. I tend to think like like her problem is that she was having a miserable time trying to get through everything she felt was important on the trip she spent thousands of dollars on and then was angry because the only people in the park that seemed to know what they were doing and were having a good time, the only people that were smiling were the childless millennials who come off and, and had lower yeah. expectations of like, you know what I'm doing today? I'm going to go, I'm going to get a churro and I'm going to ride pirates and I'm going to buy a, a spirit jersey and I'm going to leave. And those are all my expectations for today. And if those are fulfilled, I'm happy. And theirs was yeah. this laundry list that they didn't complete. And she's sitting there stewing over it because why are these people, these people are, they don't have, they don't have kids. They have to watch and they don't have to do that. And, and like sort of, you know, punishing other people for decisions you made. Like you decided to bring your entire family to Disney world, whether or not you can handle that. It's not my problem. That's kind of the appeal of Disney World, though, is um, I'd say, I've, I've heard you say, the parks at Disney World generally are not as good as some of the other parks in the world, especially the castle parks. Um, but the appeal of Disney World is there's so much to discover. And I think if you don't live here, you come here once a year or once every five years or whatever, there's a lot of pressure to try to do all these things yeah. you've heard about. It's and expensive. so you got to knock these up. And, and so... To me, I'm in no hurry because I've I'm, I still haven't done it all right. I sent you the thing of the other day of something that none of us yeah. have done. That's a you know a cra arts and crafts type experience at, at the Wilderness Lodge. All these types of things that you could do. There's a lot to discover, and when you're local, it is easier to go. You know what? I'm going to go to Hollywood Studios. My girlfriend wants to go shopping. I'm going to sit someplace, yeah. get a cold beverage, and soak it all in. Have a good time. 
and and leave. I don't feel any pressure that I have to ride this ride, see yeah. this show. I don't need to. Uh, I don't need yeah. to jostle for position for anything. Yeah. Now, the nature of our job, unfortunately, means we do a lot of first day of uh, things, uh, festivals, and things like that. Uh, if I were going to food and wine festival, and it's like the first day where we try to do everything, we try to. Excuse me. We try to try every drink. Yeah eat every food, sample all this, and review it for people, that's stressful and it's a pain in the butt and it's not fun, right? If I go to Food & Wine right now, I'm like, hey, who's playing at Food & Wine this week? Oh, it's 38 Special. Yeah. Oh, I know a couple of their songs. You know what? I'm going to go after work. I'm going to go. I'm going to chill. I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to watch yeah. 38 Special. That's a totally different experience than I can see how they would resent the people that get to do that. But we don't apply, like when we look at, and this is maybe getting into a topic for an upcoming show, but when we do that first day at Food and Wine, we don't apply that to then what people's experience is going to be, right? I don't come back no. and go, you shouldn't do Food and Wine. It was miserable. The lines were long and we, we took forever to no. do everything. No, because we're not having the normal guest experience to begin with. Um, and you should not go to Food and Wine intending to eat and drink at every booth. No, that's, that's irresponsible. clinically insane. And you should only do that if you're yeah. a professional blogger who knows if how If you're to... on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're on our spectrum. I'm sorry. I might have used spectrum in a way. That You've was, used it a lot, and I don't. Know. But I, feel, I think I've met. I want to make. I want to be clear targeted. about the spectrum we're talking about. I'm not talking about yeah. like a, a you know any no. type of condition someone might have. Yeah. I just mean in the view of like I'm on the low side of being a Disney fan. I'm on the high side of being yeah. a Disney fan. Um, but yeah, you go to a festival. Uh, there might be pressure to do everything. Hey, I heard, especially if you go to some. If you get your news from people who always say everything's great, there's a lot of pressure to eat all this great food. Yeah. I think that is part of the service that we like to provide is go, you know what? This one's not as good as that one. Maybe skip it. Because you're going to go spend your money anyway. Yeah. Why don't you spend it on the things that are yeah. good and not because someone told you everything is good? Well, we're, cross, we're starting to cross over yeah, with the other discussion. Ugh. I, I want to stay on the Disney adult one. All right. Um, but, yeah, I don't. Why do people, I see your next point. Should we just start that conversation? Sure. Why do people hate them? Yeah. I think we just talked about it. I yeah. think it's it's a, it's a rage and a jealousy. I think, look, Disney World is is daunting. And, and I say that whether you're a tourist or not, Disney World is the one that they make it the most difficult to do what you can do here. I think everywhere else is a lot easier. Like I, you know, I was nervous bringing my parents to Japan and then once we got there, I was like, wow, this is actually still easier than Disney World to do with them. Um, and that's a park where where lines, you know, certainly in the past have been longer than they are even for rides here. Um, you know, the Japanese guests do not mind waiting, like kind of like Anaheim. When they want to do something, they want to do it. They're going to get in line for it. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it's, Disney World specifically, I think, a lot of people go to Disney World and they have a miserable time, and then project that onto us. And it's like, well, it's, I, I didn't tell you to bring your, your six children I would have Disney knocked out World. my whole list if it wasn't for those childless millennials like, in line to buy a pretzel. There's, And I certainly think there are people with children who have a good time at Disney World. I think that happens. I think there's people with lower to no expectations. They're few and far between, but I think that happens. But they think the problem is so many people have expectations, and then when they show up late for a parade, when I mean like they show up 15 minutes before the parade's set to start, and they see at the front of the rope are grown adults, they decide that they're entitled to the front, and then their children are entitled to the front, and not the adult who's waited there for an hour. Well, think about it. You right? paid. You, it's an expensive experience, and yeah. you expect something premium. And when you are not put above other people, yeah. even though you've spent all this money, you you. People get upset, right? You yeah. hear that all the time. You know how much this costs. You know what we spent to be here. Yeah. You know all this, all this kind of stuff, and that it is. Look, the guest experience has been stratified, right? You can spend more money to get more out of people, yeah. right? You to get a better experience. Um, it only goes or, so far. or a faster experience anyway. Like I've been on uh, VIP tours before, and yeah, you get to go to the front of the line. It's not always better. No. Right. Sometimes those those lines are uh, you experience things in there that you didn't expect. There's yeah. some of that unexpected uh, magic in there. Yeah. Whether that you know Avatar: Flight of Passage, perfect example, right? That queue is you amazing, do Lightning yeah. Lane and you miss a lot of amazing yeah. stuff. I don't I don't advocate for always waiting for three hours in line. I'm just saying yeah. there are things that you miss when you do these things. We went to Horror Nights on an R.I.P. tour. 
But now the cues aren't themed. Yeah, horrors. so you don't really miss any of that. Uh, but also that you do miss a little bit of the experience of anticipation and yeah. discussing the last house. Getting you were that in. drink and then getting in queue with your friends and talking about the houses while you drink yeah, and then yeah. going in the house. Yeah. yeah, so you miss a little you bit do. of that when yeah. you're when you're skipping a line. But but you get to knock things off your list. So if your yeah. goal is to knock things off the list, you know, you're gonna be a little bit yeah. more frustrated. Yeah. going to Disney World than if you're just someone who can go there. Yeah. And, you know, I used to say it, even when I, I lived in Tampa, which is still close enough to go a lot, it's like, you know what? Show up to Magic Kingdom early for rope drop. You can knock out all the e-tickets by 1030 in the morning, yeah. go back to your resort, take a nap, swim in the pool, come back for fireworks. That's a lot more relaxing vacation than these people you see who have been there all day long at the end of the night trudging out of there that look like they just got out of, like, the Battle of Bellow Wood, <laughs> covered in smudge and sweat, and they look miserable, and they can barely walk, and everybody's limping, and they're dragging the items they bought behind them, you know? Don't pay to make yourself miserable. Be okay with missing a few things. You don't have to do everything. The other side of it is just... Well, that's not a Disney adult discussion. I think that's just yeah. about why do people hate Disney adults. Well, the other reason I think is just people on the internet just don't have anything better to do. I think people look... <clears throat> Like they, they are, you know, you're going through TikTok and you see something weird. And you're like, these people are weird. I don't understand them. And so therefore I hate them. And I'm going to leave a comment about how these people should get normal lives. Right. And that's, I think a lot of it's just that a lot of it's just people passing judgment and being mean on the internet because you can be. If you go to Disney world and you don't find anything you like, maybe the problem's you. Cause yeah, there's something between, forever. Like if you don't like to go to a interesting restaurant or you don't like to go to a lounge and have try some cocktails. You don't like to go on fun rides or you don't like to see entertainment or you don't like, you know, anything, the, the architecture, the design, if you can't find something in any of that, then you're, you've come in looking to hate this thing because there, there is something for everyone. It's a very diverse thing. And that's why I said, like you brought up the point I always make is like, well, what'd you do at your weekend? And it's like, well, I went shopping and we ate at a restaurant and I went to the movies. And it's like, I went shopping at the park, I ate at a restaurant, and instead of watching a movie, I rode one, <laughs> right? <laughs> is it terribly different? No, it's not. Ride the movies. Now we're getting a universal adult. It is, <laughs> but um, that's a whole different discussion. But, but that's that's the truth of it, and people just, you know, you, you go to your local mall, and I, I like to go away and go to a Disney park and have that experience. And I, again, I think if you haven't experienced it, or at least experienced in the way you would have, right? Because there's plenty of people who've been dragged or went with certain family members, whatever, and probably didn't get to do the things they wanted to do and have a bad taste in their mouth for it. But um, I think if you actually went and looked for the things that you think would interest you, I think there are, like you said, there's a spectrum. And I think there's people that are different fans of different things. Like we have people on staff who their life is the parade. Like they go see the parade every day. They go to the park and they go see the stage shows and that's that's it. That's what they love. That's their thing. And there are people mm -hmm. that I just want to go ride Tron and Everest and like I yeah. want I want thrill rides. And there are people like, you know, for me, at least with Disney World, what I've what I still love about Disney World, you know, compared to and certainly when I go to other ones, it's different. But at Disney World in particular, I've fallen in love with I think the resorts are spectacular yeah. and I love the dining. Yeah. I think like Sanaa and La Cellier and Chico and you know Brown Derby and like I love living here and getting to go to those every couple weeks. Like those are some very good restaurants and I love them and they're super. You're going fun. there every couple of weeks. You're you're that's very expensive. Cobb salad's twenty nine bucks. A thirty dollar with salad. shrimp. Yeah, but it's very filling and very good. And you also get the bread. I also know people like Nana live for the character meet and greets. Yeah. It, not my thing, but I'm yeah. glad that I'm glad there's something for everyone. Yeah. Right. But that's the thing, is like it's it's you know, it's it's kind of a variety show, right? There there's some act along, you know, in, in all this property that's gonna be the thing you love and there's gonna be an abundance of it, right? Whether it's bars and lounges or restaurants or or, you know, pools or uh, golf or, or, you know, I want to go on rides. I want to do like there. Once you find the things you love, there's more than enough of them to placate you for several days. Um, I agree. So I think, I think it is just one of two things. It's people come and have a bad time and blame the people around them. Or I think it is just like people on the internet, just being mean, which is a thing people do. People just cast yeah. judgment. Right. I think we, I think there's plenty of groups, you know, I, I think I watch, I, I don't feel the need to comment because I think that's unnecessary, but there's certainly things I see on there where I'm like, that's, 
that fandom or that activity seems weird to me. I don't feel the need to deride the people that do it. That's great that they're happy. Good for them. I personally think it's weird. It's not my thing. That doesn't mean I have to tell you you're wrong because you're not. It's just not a thing I understand or I want to take part in. That's all. Sir, you are a Jets fan telling me to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm you're kidding. telling me Don't... not to believe in fairy tales. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh. Full respect to the Jets fans out there. No. Just kidding. But <laughs> None. <laughs> we all believe in something. As a New Yorker who was a, is a lifelong Dolphins fan for some reason. Um, but that's the thing, right? And similar to sports is Disney people are, I think, in many cases, like, look, there's people that come later in life and fall in love with it. But they're born and bred, right? I grew up in a household where my parents went to the 1964 World's Fair mm -hmm. and they watched Walt Disney on television. Right. And before I was born, they were coming here. I was born into it. It was passed down from generation to generation. And the same thing about sports fans, right? It's a majority, with religion too, right? Yeah. You start a church when you're a kid. They, I think a majority yeah. of sports fans, usually you're a fan of the team that was passed down to you. It's usually like, don't get me wrong. There are people that split off like Nick in Nick's case, his father was a Yankees fan, but he became a Red Sox fan. God knows what happened. But <laughs> in most cases, like I'm a Dolphins fan because for some reason, a bunch of people in my family were Dolphins fans. So that's what something I Something connected with you. That's what I knew. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's sometimes it's something that's passed down to you at a very young age and you just, it, it's part of your life then, now and forever. That's just the way it is. And it could be true of sports or Disney or, you know, a TV show you love or a movie or whatever, or even, you know, recreational activities, things you do, whether you, you play golf or you play baseball or, you know. As Tom said, that's the way it is. So, um, Tom, we have a sponsor for this segment of the show. Do we? Is it WWNT the app? Oh, it's us. It's Again. us. Again. We have no real sponsors for this show yet. Just us. It's just us. Uh, WWNT the app. You can download the app. Uh, you get all your news stories. Yes, we know there's still a 50th logo. Don't worry. We're working on that. It's been a copy. Uh, but if you don't want to go to the website, uh, which we encourage you to go to the website, of course, for all the best news about yeah. Disney theme parks around the world. Uh, but WWNT the app. You get personalized notifications based on which news topics are most interesting to you. So whether it's Disney World or Disneyland, you could select as many or as few as you want, and it'll just give you notifications of when there's news that will apply to you. So um, it's, a, it's a great thing. A lot of people tell me they, the people that use it love it. I don't personally because I write and edit on the website, so I know what's going out. Um, yeah. But but the you know our Wigs members and such that use it always have very kind things to say. I know it makes a big difference for people. My girlfriend's a big user of it. Anytime there's a typo on a website, she'll send me a screenshot from the app with a little arrow, hastily drawn arrow pointing to the typo, the app. It's a great way to get our content. Yeah. Look, it's been a, a pleasure today, Tom, our first mm. foray back into the podcasting world. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please discuss in the comments what you think. If you have thoughts, yeah. helps us with whatever the, if this algorithm does and all that kind of uh, stuff. You know, and, and we'd love to hear your thoughts, too. Uh, we'll be doing this every week. And until next time. Well, there will be. I just want to clarify before we, before we shove off. Um, this is not like the permanent structure, right? It's it's a growing, you know, like the parks. It's a living, breathing, evolving right. thing. There there could be more people at this table with us, depending on correct. We will have guests. And... We'll have different topics. In fact, we'll do more interaction. We've uh, if you follow our YouTube channel for our next episode, we've already asked some questions yeah. about what people uh, think about the topic. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the topic? The topic is going to be the the state of the Disney fan community, whether it's. Uh, journalists or bloggers, vloggers, uh, Disney, Cloggers, them, di <laughs> Disney themselves, whatever the case may be, the um, just some some asking some interesting ethical questions about the state of the community. Why is it the way it is? How does it differ? You know, on different coasts and different regions, things like that. So anything and everything related to the state of the fandom, with you know, um, whether it be just you, the fans out in. Uh, you know, out there or, or these entities like WWNT and Disney that, that provide the news or, you know, whatever the case may be. Well, thanks for letting us bring this back, Tom. I think it's going to be a fun journey. Yeah, I'm, Hopefully I'm excited. Hopefully people like it. Yeah. Until next time. We'll see you real soon. We'll see you real soon. Mm -hmm.